Hello friends, family, and internet stranger. Stephanie here with a finally new what's for dinner video. I have fallen off the cooking wagon. I went away a few weeks ago for my birthday and then just was not cooking that much once I got back. So I am finally starting to get back into cooking more so hopefully my videos will get back on track as well i do have enough content now for a few videos so thank you for bearing with me and let's get right into this week's what's for dinner first up some meatloaf this is going to be a barbecue ranch meatloaf because i had a ranch and i thought eh, why don't i put this in some meatloaf Normally with meatloaf, I do a one to one to one to one ratio of one pound of meat to one egg to one cup of breadcrumbs to one cup of liquid. And the way that my family has always done this is half barbecue sauce, half water. So that's what I had, a half a cup of each. And then I just put one pack of ranch seasoning in there for fun. So this is all just one pound of meat that I'm using here. I had it in the freezer still from when I had gotten this ground beef at a really good reduced price on clearance and threw it immediately in the freezer. So I am just mixing all of this up. I do use gloves when I was growing up. Anytime I would do this with my dad, he would always say the secret ingredient when you were doing something like this was the dirt underneath your fingernails but I've become slightly germaphobic over the years, so I use gloves, which is what my mother does as well. So once I've got all of that mixed up, but not over mixed, you don't wanna do it too, too long, because you don't want the meat to change texture too much. I am going to form this into a loaf in my pan, and then I did this in the air fryer. So I put it plain like this in to get it started. And then after about 15 minutes or so, I pull it out and then add in some barbecue sauce. So I am just pouring barbecue sauce straight from the bottle over the top of this. I do not have a measurement. I just put it right on top and then I'm going to brush it with a little silicone brush and essentially baste this all over the top of my meatloaf and then put it back in the air fryer until it's close to done. But I do keep an eye on this because if it starts to get a little bit dry, I will put more barbecue sauce on that. So that is what I did. I did one more round of barbecue sauce after this one. And then I am one who doesn't trust all of the cooking times that I find on the internet. So I'm not going to give you all an exact time of how long I cooked this. I'm just gonna say, use a meat thermometer make sure it's fully cooked before you eat it. Uh, I checked mine multiple times and kept it in and kept it nice and juicy until it was all done. And this is what it looks like when it's done with that nice barbecue glaze that has formed from a few layers of it. I served this with some instant mashed potatoes and peas because that is what I had on hand and I was all about using up things that I already had. Next up, I've got some pesto flatbread pizza type thing. Now, I am going to flat out say that this was a fail, but I am keeping it in this video because I think the concept was fine. It was the sauce that I didn't like. I had not tried this particular pesto before, and I was not a fan. So this recipe would be good, if you have pesto that you like. So this is a really easy dinner idea. I just took a flatbread that I had gotten on sale at Aldi. I also had one of these flatbreads in one of my previous videos that I'll link below because that one turned out amazing. I did a sausage and pepper flatbread and that is in my sausage and pepper video. Again, I will link that down below. So this one, I used pesto and then I had these slices of mozzarella so I used that and then this chicken is pre-cooked chicken that I had batch cooked and then pulled out of the freezer and I had coated that in the pesto as well and again if the pesto sauce was good I would have enjoyed this so definitely try it with a pesto that you like this one that I did not like was one of the Aldi ones so not going to recommend that next up I've got takeout this is a place that I love chop stop 
Chopstop has my favorite salads. I like to be able to eat my salads with a spoon. I like the stuff to be that small that I can eat it with a spoon, although they were out of spoons, so I only had a fork this time. I got the buffalo chicken chop, which was a limited item. It had buffalo chicken, celery, peppers, and carrots. It also came with tomatoes, but I'm not a fan, so I subbed that out for bell peppers, and this was a really good salad. If you have a chop stop near you, definitely recommend. Next up is another cleaning out the freezer kind of meal. I had gotten this bag of chicken parm from Aldi from the freezer section and I cooked it according to the package, but having chicken parm that doesn't have cheese on top seemed weird, so I added cheese. Overall, this tasted good, but it was a pain to make. It was really easy in terms of you literally dump it in the pan and then stir it a couple times and then it's done. But look at the way this cooks. They have the cheese mixed into it and the sauce is cubes, so it melts at a different rate than the cheese. So this was messy. It started to burn a little bit because that cheese was at the bottom of the pan. And then again, since I like cheese on top of here, I added some slices of mozzarella and that's the final dish. Again, it tasted good but it was not the easiest to make or to clean up after because that cheese that was in it was all over the bottom of the pan. Next up, another cleaning out the fridge meal. That's a lot of what this video is, is cleaning out my fridge. I've had this kielbasa in my refrigerator for a while and luckily it doesn't go bad very quickly, but I thought it was probably time to finally use it. I also had some coleslaw mix to use up. so. I am starting out here with a pan with just a little bit of avocado oil and my turkey kielbasa and once it is all in one even layer, I let it cook up a little bit and once it starts to brown, I flip it over. I am not a master of this. I will flip every individual little piece versus all of them at once. I know I could probably use a spatula that's larger and get more of these flipped at once, but honestly, I'll just keep flipping one at a time. <laughs> so with this, I just, once it was all cooked, added in a bag of coleslaw mix. You could also add peppers, onions, anything else that you enjoy, but I didn't have anything else on hand and I really just wanted to use up this bag of coleslaw mix and the kielbasa, so I did that with some oil some Creole seasoning, that's that Uncle Tony's, as Christine over at the Frugal Fit Mom calls it, that one that I'm not even gonna pronounce other than it's Uncle Tony's. So I sprinkled some of that on, and then once I got that coated, I wanted to add some garlic, added that to the pan, let it get fragrant, and then mixed it in with everything else. And then it did need a little bit more seasoning, so I tasted it and then I just let it cook down until my coleslaw mix was nice and soft. If you like this crunchier, you could cook it for less time than I did, but this is pretty much all I cooked it is what you see in this video, and this is only at two times speed here. So it did not take very long to cook it all to get nice and soft the way I like it. I originally intended for this to be lunches, I had a little bit of it for dinner, but I mainly made this to take to work for lunch so I could get stuff out of my refrigerator. And that's it, nice and simple. Next up, this is from one of my favorite Italian places here in Burbank that I have mentioned before on my channel. It is Monte Carlo Deli and Pinocchio's Restaurant. It is in Burbank, California. I love their fettuccine alfredo. That is my favorite place in Burbank to get chicken fettuccine alfredo. They also have my favorite Caesar salad. So that's what I got right here. And if you are ever in the Burbank area, I do recommend this place. It's really good. Thanks so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and found some inspiration to maybe use up something from your fridge or freezer this week. If you did, I hope you'll let me know what you're planning on making down in the comment box below. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching.